All right, guys, so this is Miles Matias, and I'm here with the Hell's Kitchen Season 4 winner, Rock Harper. He's been Season 3. Sorry, my bad. Season 3 winner, Rock Harper. He's been much requested by a lot of you guys that are watching my videos. Um, a lot of you guys have watched my video on Michael Ray, the first person ever won Hell's Kitchen, and a lot of you requested that I interview Rock and just ask him a couple questions and really just get to know his story from beginning to where he's at right now. So we'll just get started. So Rock, um, I'm glad to have you. This is my YouTube channel that I started about four months ago with my first interview being Michael Ray, which was really cool that it worked out that way. So I'm yeah. glad to be talking with you. But I just want you to, to let me know, how did Hell's Kitchen change your life? If you can just take um, us through well, that a little bit. Well, first, I just want to say thanks for having me on your show, Miles. I appreciate it. Uh, um, shout out to my man, Michael Ray, awesome dude, phenomenal chef, and a really cool brother. So thanks for having me. How did it change my life? Um, you know, it's still changing my life. Um, well, let me not say that. The experience, uh, you know, was something that happened on the path that is my, you know, my, my physical life. And um, I've had many things happen as a result. Um, so specifically... Uh, you know, it gave me a bigger platform. There's no doubt in that. Um, it, it made me more recognizable uh, in the eyes of many, millions of people watch your show. Uh, I've got connected, more, most important, to other beautiful human beings, like the contestants, like um, Chef Ramsey, the sous chefs, the, you know, the producers, and many of the people that, you know, uh, create the show. So, uh, it's really gave me an opportunity. It's given me an opportunity to uh, be more connected with folks, you know, and to um, and to just uh, make a bigger dent in the in the universe. Well, that's awesome. As far as relationships go, what are the most valuable relationships you've made being on Hell's Kitchen? Like, how did those relationships begin, and how do they impact you? Valuable? What do you mean? Oh, how did those relationships begin on the show? And how oh. are they currently impacting you now? Um, well, I mean, you just meet people. <laughs> you know, I met the contestants when I met them. Uh, and we talk. We haven't talked in a, in a while. Uh, maybe a little social media here and there. Yeah. Um, you know, so I wouldn't necessarily value one over the other. Uh, I still have relationships with, like, some of the casting producers. Um, shout out to Karen Happel, who, uh, who casted me mm -hmm. um, with, with Peter Huntley. And it's just, you know, and, and Chef Ramsey, obviously, who I'm, um, you know, grateful to be connected to. I, I wouldn't say any one is more valuable than the other. Yeah. It's just uh, I love people. I love, um, you know, other good souls and good spirits. So, uh, um, you know, sometimes you don't talk to folks for 10 years. And it might just be, you know, they say a lot, hello to you at the right time when you really needed a shout. Um, or sometimes you might, you know somebody might recommend you for a job or you know an opportunity mm -hmm. um, so what's what's more valuable than the other the hello or the or the job it depends on what you value and I just value you know good experiences that that you know that vibe with me uh, correctly at the time so uh, I think there are all the connections of value even ones that even the ones that you know the relationships that don't work out are valuable to some degree yeah. Um, so yeah it's it's a good experience and when was the last time you bumped into Gordon Ramsay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw him. Um, I saw him yesterday on Rodeo. We were both shopping. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, wow. <laughs> when's, when's the last time I saw? I can't remember that. I, the last time I've seen him, I saw him two a couple nights ago on the show. But in in person, um, it had to have been a few years ago when I was on the show. Um, I forget what season it was, but yeah, that was the last time I was on the set. Awesome. And now I want to go backwards. When did it all begin for you? This love of cooking, this passion. I know you went to a culinary school. Um, mm -hmm. when, what are your first experiences in the kitchen, whether it's at home or in a restaurant? Well, I grew up, uh, my grandmother was a phenomenal cook. Um, and she... 
you know, food was everywhere for us. I mean, yeah. she would bake rolls and uh, bake biscuits and, and just make these amazing scratch uh, meals. It seemed like at every, at, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and it wasn't all, you know, elaborate, but she was just a, a wonderful cook and she used her resources, um, you know, around her and she, she you know, she, she grew produce uh, at her home. Um, so that's where it started for me. My my mother was, it still is a great cook as well, very resourceful. You know, my mother could do a challenge like a, you know, probably a, um, you know, sort of mystery ingredient challenge uh, probably very well because no matter what, uh, we were well fed and we didn't have the uh, the best of, you know, times were tough a lot of times, but food was not really uh, an issue when she went in the kitchen. Yeah. So a lot of it started, um, you know, with my mother, my grandmother telling me that you know great food was necessary that's awesome now speaking of your mother was your father in your life at all um he died when i was really young oh, I'm sorry so to hear that. that's all right uh he's still you know he left his physical body but it's his soul is still here um or somewhere um, but yeah it died when i was really young so and your mom's love for cooking, love being in the kitchen. Um, if you could maybe just say a sentence about how your mom impacted you, what would you have to say? Oh, my mother impacts me, you know, all the time. And as a youth, I mean, I probably wouldn't be cooking for more for her. And I mean that in a very literal way. Uh, she always told me I could be whatever I wanted. She always supported me. Uh, I remember when I when I first started loving cooking, uh, I thought I could do it as a profession. It was eighth grade in home ec class mm -hmm. um, at GW in Alexandria, Virginia. Um, shout out to AVA. Uh, and uh, I came home and I made this lasagna. I'm all geeked up. I'm sliced. I'm like, you know, I can't believe I made this. And she went out and a few days later, weeks later, and we went and brought some supplies, uh, you know, some ingredients for me to make these little lasagnas and sell them to the people in the neighborhood. And she always, and I made like this seafood bake, and she did the same thing. And I look back at that seafood bake, and it was just like, <laughs> not good. I mean, it was good, but it wasn't, you know, it was, it was a 12, 13-year-old kid. So my mother really always supported me every step of the way. I wanted to take a year off from culinary, or, you know, I said I wanted to make money before I went to culinary school. And she, she fell out and told me, no, I need to go to college immediately. Um, and it was a good move, because I probably would have you know, stayed in the streets or, some, or done something silly yeah. to jeopardize my career. So um, my mother was, you know, in the kitchen, uh, but outside of the things that surround, uh, she's always been a, a driving force and still is um, for me to, uh, you know, to thrive in my career. That's awesome. And col as far as culinary school goes, what school did you go to and how long was the program you were in? I went to Johnson. In a word, the, the, the wild cats, the <laughs> best culinary school on the planet. Um, and uh, I went for two years and I got my associates in uh, culinary arts. That's awesome. Where did, wh what was the first job you landed with your degree? <laughs> you know, it's funny, man. I was like um, title chasing mm -hmm. when I first got out because Johnson Wells is a prestigious school. So I wanted a title and I wanted a salary. Yeah. You know, I was going to restaurants and applying and they were offering me like prep cook, line cook. <laughs> and I'm like, nah, man, I graduated from Jay Wu. You know, I'm worth more than $6 an hour, $7 an hour. Yeah. And uh, so I, my first gig that I can recall was um, Chesapeake Bagel Bakery. It was, little, it was this bagel shop in Virginia, Northern Virginia. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they gave me a salary, they gave me benefits, and a title, I was like assistant store manager. And I was, you know, 96, I was 19 years old at the time. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> that assistant, that just shows you something about assistant store manager at a bakery shop, right? <laughs> Even though I had this, this schooling, this amazing schooling, I had no experience in the real, in the kitchen in life. Yeah. Um, so, I quit that shortly thereafter. It didn't work because it wasn't fulfilling to me. Um, so my first real kitchen job was uh, Planet Hollywood in D.C. Mm -hmm. when they had it in D.C. Uh, and I, I, they, they paid me $7 an hour. Um, and I got my ass kicked. 
It was hard as hell, slinging pizzas. I was on the pizza. It was the hardest station in there. Oh wow! Yeah, they, it was a, it was a. We we hired out of the halfway house. The, you know, they recruited oh, wow. cooks out of the halfway house. Working with some some tough dudes. Went on to be some of my <laughs> closest friends at the time. But it was it was a hell of an environment. So mm -hmm. seven dollars an hour working as a line cook, planning Hollywood was my first like real restaurant job. You feel like that's what really molded you, as far as like some of the groundwork of like your character in the kitchen as to kind of leading up to your time on Hell's Kitchen and even who you are right now. Um, yeah, Planet Hollywood actually, or that process of, of getting that and humbling myself definitely played a, played a part in my life. Um, and I would say it probably had some impact on Hell's Kitchen. Um, I mean, that was tough as Kitchen. Really, it was tough. The sous chef was this short woman she probably weighed 50 pounds and she wasn't scared of none of those guys her name was wanda i love wanda yeah. um and she he would i mean she would run that kitchen and those guys i'm talking about i i worked with some guys who were self-classified as thugs you know what i'm saying and but well, they can cook but they were street dudes <laughs> and wanda ran that kitchen like she wasn't afraid of nobody she ran her kitchen um and they love you know they appreciated her so yeah um, but it was a tough environment to survive and, and, and thing the way you survive it wasn't like the streets or anything like that The way you survive is you put out great product you held your own on the line Otherwise, you would be swallowed up and spit out um, So yeah, that was I would say that formed uh, You know it wandered in place. So she was like a little woman black version of um, Gordon Ramsay without the accent, <laughs> you know yeah. yeah So to move further on I want you to explain your casting process because everyone I talk to has a very interesting story of how they got casted onto Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, mine was um interesting. <laughs> I, I, I took a bus up to New York um, in, early in the morning. My first casting call. I went up to New York from D.C. and uh, you know, I was in full-on interview mode, and I stood in line for hours. You know, I, I had like a I had like a sweater and a dress shirt underneath it. And some slacks and I you know I mean it was guys coming in the bar taking shots it's like nine o'clock in the morning they were drinking you know oh, this wow. guys dress oh man it was, it was New York so you know character showed up and I'm sitting there looking at my resume going over it you know just not knowing what to expect yeah and um, Debbie and Lisa Gaines, who actually do a lot of the casting for the show came downstairs at one point and were like hey guys I don't want to hear about your careers and your CIA education. If I wanted a bunch of, you know, um, I can't remember how she put it. I would, you know, we would go recruit through culinary school or something like that. We want to hear about your personalities. So I didn't really understand what that meant. But by the time I got up there, I was, you know, I don't know. They asked me, why should I be on the show? I gave some lame ass answer. <laughs> and then Sheila, and I'm sitting with Sheila Conlon, who is the, the casting producer for the entire show, show right? Oh, wow. So she is the casting agent for everybody. They have these different satellite casting sort of producers around the country, but she, they all come through Conlon, product Sheila Conlon. And I get her, and I'm nervous. I didn't know who the hell she was at the time, but I was just nervous. And my interview was like 30 seconds. Oh. I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't make it. I'm like, fuck, I'm done. <laughs> so... You know, I just I just didn't feel like I made a good impression. So, um, I, a couple of days later, the next closest interview I'm in Virginia. The next closest one was um, Atlanta, mm -hmm. and I said I would give it another shot, and I didn't know how. Um, so after work one night, about ten o'clock, I gassed up the car, me, wife, kids, and drove to Atlanta. Now I had to be at the casting like in the afternoon, and then I had to be to work on the next day. So it was a Friday. It was off. On Saturday, and I had to be at work on Sunday, uh, and it went great. I went in there, I had jeans, t-shirt, I was totally comfortable. You know, it was a three-person interview. Like I killed it. I was just myself. I said I wouldn't leave without them knowing who I was. If they didn't like me, that's cool. It's not about getting on the show. It's just they got to know who I am. Um, and then they offered me a joint, you know, a, a follow-up interview, and I was like, yeah, I can't do it tomorrow because I got to go back to work. So I went out in the parking lot, told my wife. And she was like, you don't get your ass back in there. Forget that job. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, so 
I, I had a, I had a homie, one of my partners had just moved to Atlanta because mm-hmm. I didn't really have any money at the time. Yeah. Uh, one of my partners had moved to Atlanta. So I called him up and he had a guest house um, that we stayed in. He's balling. Uh, <laughs> so we stayed in his house. I went and got some, you know, and the rest is history. Like, so they cast you. So they love me. I did the follow up interview. Um, and uh, I did the follow up interview the next day. And then, you know, they love me. They sent it on to L.A. And then once you get to L.A., it's like 30 or 40 people. And then they sort of dwindle it down. Yeah. So once you're officially casted, did they lock you down like they do it? Like on other seasons, I hear that they lock them down and it's a wrap until you're on set. Once you, I mean, I once you get casted. I knew I was casted when I was in Virginia. Once you get, once you arrive in California, in Southern California, you're on lockdown. I mean, yeah. you go from the airport to the hotel. And yeah, you locked down. That's a nice lockdown. I yeah. mean, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. Real guys is locked down, so it's a, <laughs> you know, it's you you locked down in a um in a really nice hotel, yeah. and they bring you three meals a day. Uh, you got a TV. You don't have access to. A, I mean, the phone doesn't work. It calls straight to the. You know. Yeah. You can't. They take your cell phone. Um, they search your bags to make sure you ain't got no, you know, whatever they're looking for. I don't know. But so, yeah, you're in seclusion is what we call it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say, say, I saved the lockdown for all my, all my guys is really doing time. <laughs> yeah. So when you were on set, you were not allowed to call your wife, talk to your kids, nothing. Nah, no, not at all. Uh, there's no communication with the outside world. There is, um, they do, they did a great job on my season of keeping in contact with, my family yeah. um cynthia who's one of the producers who's like the aunt or the mother of the show if you will i don't know if she's still with the show yeah. but um she's just wonderful uh but she would call i want to say every week and she couldn't give details but just to you know just to give it a sharing call like hey he's doing fine um so that you know i didn't know that at the time but that that you know retrospect that made me feel a lot better about the show because um, you know it just felt like they cared about people and it wasn't just like we snatching and taking you away from your family <laughs> yeah you know what i'm saying well that's awesome so what a lot of people always want to know about is i know this is kind of backtracking a little bit but how did you meet meet your wife <laughs> and where did you meet her oh man um high school I, we met in high school. I, um, 12th grade, I, me and my friends I had devised a plan to do everything we could in, like, you know, senior activities. Yeah. And uh, one of the things was this fashion show. I don't think everybody did. It was just me and Damien. Um, but this fashion show, like, we'll do the fashion show. The models, you know, I had a little, I had some abs back then, so I could do the <laughs> swimsuit, com- you know, the uh, <laughs> swimsuit model. Uh, she was, I had known who she was because my wife wasn't from my school. She she had just moved there like that year or the year prior, I think that year. And she's beautiful, and every so everybody knew, like who who she was. I mean, she's gorgeous. Yeah. So, you know, she, it was a little buzz. And a couple of my friends used to talk about it. Yo, you see that girl? And I, you know, I didn't really know. I knew who she was, but I didn't have no intention on talking to her. Um, and a couple of guys I knew tried to holler at her, too. Uh, but she was standoffish. Anyway, long story short, yeah, I entered the competition. And she, one of the scenes, she was the, you know, the coordinator of the scene. It was the swimsuit scene. Mm-hmm. So... You know, we had to talk, and um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I met her through that, and I just then I pursued her. <laughs> and it took a little bit, but you know, she 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 let me in the door. Yep, <laughs> that's awesome. And yeah, how was it? I don't have kids. I'm married, but I don't have kids. How was it when you had your first child? Oh, that was a blessing. Um, my son Elijah just turned 18. Oh, it was wow. a blessing, you know. It was 
it was a beautiful blessing from God because, um, you know, we had lost a child a couple of years prior. Uh, you know, my wife had some, we had some complications. Yeah, I'm sorry. And so, thank you. It's, um, so it was challenging, especially for her, you know, it's her body. It was challenging for, and it was a, it was a late loss, you know, in, in the pregnancy. Um, so when Elijah came about, it was just, I mean, I, I can, I can literally feel how I felt. It was just joy. Yeah. It was just joy. Like I'd never felt it was, you know, um, just tears and it was just a celebration. So yeah, it was beautiful. And, uh, we had a couple more after that. <laughs> it was a great thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's awesome. <clears throat> Now we're going to go forward again. Yeah. <laughs> your time on the show. Sorry, I'm like super emotional. <laughs> no. Oh, that's it's all good, man. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. It's, that's all good. Right. Um, <clears throat> now you're on Hell's Kitchen. Um, I'm just trying to bring my frame of mind into where you're at. You're on Hell's mm -hmm. Kitchen. You're in the final two. You've picked your team. You're up against, I don't know her name, but I know her occupation was a nanny. Bonnie. Bonnie. How how did you feel in your head that you might get beaten out by someone who doesn't even have as much experience as you? Mm -hmm. what, where were you at? Because on the show, you seemed very stressed out that you may lose the competition to someone that hasn't put the time into the industry that you've put into it. Well... The thing about me, I think this is one of the reasons why I did well, and I do well in period, in things that, when I do well, I've, I've had some failures, but I take every competitor seriously. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I can't speak on how they how they edit it and what, what came across to the viewer, but I took Bonnie seriously. Uh, and... I was focused on the things that I could control. So I don't worry about things I can't control, ever. So I was focused on putting out, you know, greatness and, 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 and refining and, and knowing I spent several weeks with Ramsey at this point. What does he want? What is, you know, just like my menu. There was a distinction, you know, it was a time where I was coming up with my menu. It was like, okay. Am I going to do, try to do something similar to, you know, maybe ref some sort of, I don't say French food, but, you know, some food that's not my cuisine. I'm a Southern cook, yeah. and I've been cooking Southern food every day at my restaurant. So, do or do I just cook what I, I know from my head and my heart? And, you know, if he doesn't like it, he doesn't like it. So, I just said I was going to cook what I knew because, you know, this is what I cook every single day. It's easy for me. Um, but to his standards though. So I had to refine a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, you know, it was just doing great, man. And really just, you know, taking elements from my dining experiences, from my working experiences to try to put them in this restaurant. I don't know if they do this now with the, with the finals, but you know, we built like a restaurant from scratch. They totally redesigned Hell's Kitchen, you know, each side for each um, competitor. And, you know, one of the things that I think impressed Ramsey the most was, I mean, I was driven. I was worried about every single detail from the bread basket um, to the amuse bouche um, to the, uh, like, the menuard, these little treats that we give to the guests at the end. I wanted to give everybody something to say goodbye. Um, even to, I had a phenomenal experience at True in Chicago. Yeah. Y'all, you which is a restaurant by Rick Tremonto and Gail Gann. They're not there, or one of them's not there. Rick's not there anymore. But I remember the women had stools for their purse, mm -hmm. right? It was like velvet covered, like, I mean, I didn't know. Like, that was my first time seeing something like that. I'm like, who the hell is sitting on a stool? Because the table was preset, but it was only like three or four of them. Um, so if a woman, if a lady, you know, she doesn't, it's a fine, it's something it's an ultra fine dining restaurant, you don't want to put your, you know, hang it over the chair. You don't yeah. want to put it on the floor. These are, you know, $1,000 bags. and So I just thought that was so 
thoughtful as a restaurateur to, to give you a seat in your site for your purse. So I told the restaurant designer on Hell's Kitchen, I wanted that. And he was able to give me like four out of 50 seats. He was able to build me like four. But I can't remember specifically, but I do think that that caught Ramsey's eye. You know, if you ever been to Ramsey or if you ever have the chance to go to his restaurants, I mean, his fine dining restaurants are about attention to detail and luxury. Um, and um, so anyway, I, I was focused on me, bro. Like, I want to focus on her. I was rooting and praying for her, you know, that she did her best as well. I want to, I want to, you know, I'm, I want to compete against greatness. I don't want to compete. Against, it didn't matter to me. She was a nanny. She was in the final yeah. and Gordon thought she needed to be in the final. So I, I wanted to destroy her, <laughs> but I want to destroy, you know, formidable competition. So I didn't take her lightly, um, but I was real serious and hell bent on uh, doing great. If you could have done the finals with anyone else, who would it have been? That's a good question. Um, probably Julia, maybe. Mm. Uh, I mean, I think that would have made for a, a good final. Or Brad. I mean, Brad, I think, technically was probably the most advanced among us. Yeah. Um, maybe one of those two. All right. <clears throat> and after you went house kitchen, you worked at the Terra Verde. Is that what it was called? Yeah. And the contractor for one year, right? Yeah. Did you have to move your whole family down there for that time period? So when they have to, I had the option of not taking the job and still winning, you know, the show. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, I, I, I moved and we moved, we moved, all of us moved out. Yeah. How was that experience for that uh, one year that you were there man, it was crazy man i mean it was good i mean you know the hotel uh, <laughs> uh you know it was a learning experience but it's las vegas and las vegas is a very different town you know and shouts to vegas and all my people out there joey hamilton liana um uh it's just it was a very different town yeah um and it's not bad. It's just Vegas. You know, everybody from around the world comes to do their shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> whatever I can't do at home, I know I can do here and leave here. But, you know, yep. I got to live there. Yeah. And I didn't try to run the family. So, um, other than that, it was great. You know, it was a blessing. And, uh, yeah, so it, it, it was good. And after your time at the Terra Verde, where did – what – what were plans that you had in mind that you want to maybe take care of? Did you partner with anyone in different restaurant ventures or go on any more shows outside of Hell's Kitchen? Um, what what did you do after um, all your time of winning was just over and done with? Mm -hmm. Well, I've done a lot, man. I've done a lot since the show, um, well, since uh, Terra Verde. Um, you know, I wrote a book, uh, mm -hmm. 44 Things Parents Should Know About Healthy Cooking for Kids. Um, been around the, the, the half the country just um, touring and, you know, um, cooking and, and trying to enrich people's lives through food. Uh, immediately after the show, you know, I've done a lot of TV or nothing TV. Uh, immediately after, though, I, my plans were to stay in Vegas, quite frankly. I didn't really, it was a little crazy, but I didn't really plan on coming back, back east yeah. like so immediately. The recession had just hit. It was 08. And, you know, the country was in a downturn. And Vegas was one of the hardest hit cities. Yeah. So as far as employment opportunities, they were there. And I could have got a job. But it was really not the kind of job that I wanted. You know, it was like, you know, hotels were laying off staff. You know, 20, 30, 40% staff. And then... But the work still needed to be done. So what you had was these positions where you had director of food and bev or executive chef, you know, and they were doing more work. Um, so it was just a tough market at the time. Yeah. But one place it was not tough because a young man named Barack Obama was coming to town uh, was Washington, D.C. Yeah. So the way the universe works um you know it all it all worked together so i went back east and i opened up a place called ben's next door 
with the Ali family um, right on U Street, right as soon as, uh, you know, Obama was coming to town in yeah. 08. You know, 08 in D.C. was not like 08 anywhere else. So, so yeah, we, we, we eventually just uh, came on back. And is that restaurant still open today? Oh, yeah. They just celebrated their, uh, I mean, this will be 10 years, actually. This will be 10 years when we opened out in December, around a week before my birthday and uh, Virginia Ali, who's the, the matriarch of the family. <laughs> so it'll be 10 years in December. That's awesome. That's good to hear. And are you, you're still a partner, of course, right? And her birthday, her birthday too. I'm sorry, did I say that? Yeah, it was. We share a birthday. Oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I'm not a partner in that. Uh, I never was a partner in that concept. I was just a chef. Okay. Uh, yeah. So as of right now, do you have any ties with any restaurants or any partnerships, or do you just um, travel as a chef? No, nah, no ties. Um, no partnerships. I own my own company, Rock Solid Creative mm -hmm. Food Group. Um, and I do some traveling. I do some private cooking for some uh, some clients back in D.C. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my company is focused on um, entertainment and um, education and inspiration, you know, and empowerment through, uh, through media. So that's what I'm doing. I'm working on. I have a show called Shift Drink where um, it's digital and it's live. Mm -hmm. Um, where we, you know, industry folks, chefs, and service have a drink and talk about stuff. Mm. And I catch it on camera. Uh, awesome. And also have, a, you know, a podcast, the Chef Rock Experiment. So, uh, you know, my company is focused uh, in a huge part on uh, media, media in the food world. Well, that's awesome. <clears throat> that's kind of all I have to ask of you right now. But... <clears throat> Any questions you have for me as the person doing this? <laughs> nah, man, I think you're great, bro. Um, you know, keep doing your thing if I can help in any way. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm about to start a show. Um, we're working on it, me and uh, my producer, we're working on a, a Hell's Kitchen show, um, a Hell's Kitchen shift drink. So, you know, if there's anybody interesting guests, you think I should be, you know, linking up with you and saying, that, you know, can you hook me up with some of your connections? <laughs> Well, there's actually a couple of Hell's Kitchen chefs that I talk to frequently, actually. Um, are you familiar with Robert Hess from season four and five? He was like 650 yeah, the pounds former, on the show. Yeah, the former big guy, the, the small yeah. guy now. Yeah, I know Robert. So I actually work, he works at a restaurant in New Mexico, and I do social media marketing. So I do like their ads and all that stuff um, with that. So we obviously because we do that we t I have to talk to him weekly about just mm -hmm. different stuff like that and then michael ray um i'm actually going to his wedding which i didn't think that would ever happen in a million years <laughs> but that's cool um that's actually a pretty unique michael's story. a good dude man. he's a he's a great guy i think um i don't know if you watch any of my videos with him but he's talked about like losing the first child um, yeah just a lot of things happened right after he won the show that kind of just put him in a bad place to where if you talk to him now he's like i probably shouldn't have won when i won because i was like already down a road that was kind of going to lead to my ruin so i feel like right now where he's at i kind of just found him at the perfect time through like an old business name typed it on instagram then there he was and i messaged him a month later he got back to me then a month later he's sitting in my apartment and we're just talking about <laughs> life. so that video i did with him got over That's fourteen thousand cool. views on, on youtube where this is gonna go wow and he has like a ton of fans reaching out to him but he was never connected to his fan base whatsoever mm -hmm. so for the first time in his time being on the show 12 years ago he's actually connected so it's kind of changed his whole mm -hmm. outlook um, I would say even on life, just all the encouragement he gets on a daily basis is incredible. Not what I expected mm -hmm. either, <clears throat> but yeah, it's cool to well, see. Well, it happens how it should, you know, yeah. it happens, you know, I'm a big believer in there's no wasted experiences. We just mm -hmm. got to understand what, you know, what is going on or maybe if we don't, but we just got to sort of view it. And, you know, his experience, I can't speak for him, but his experience on the show and then meeting with you, he was supposed to meet with you when he was supposed to, you know, like Morpheus said, well, how do you know? Because we're still alive, 
you know, um, that's that's how I know is having exactly to where it's supposed to. So that's beautiful. What I wanted to say was thank you for, you know, giving people the opportunity yeah. to, to have a platform, have a voice, and just the outlet, you know what I mean? That's, that's dope that for, for you to be able to do that, bro. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, my whole goal was just to really... I've been a fan of the show for many years. I haven't really seen anyone do what I'm doing, which is just reach out to you guys personally and just ask about your time on the show outside of like a TV interview where they're asking you really like centered questions that may not be relevant to what we, the viewers of the show want to know and then having the expertise Mm -hmm. in the social media and all that stuff to actually make it live and that people are actually going to see it and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just want to give your fans a way to interact with you in a different way through these videos that I'm doing because it's, my video at Michael got so many questions that he had to come over to my apartment again. I had to do another video just answering the questions. So that's what yeah. I hope with this one as well, that we'll just be able to use this as just a, another platform for you just to uh, <coughs> build on. So, yeah, yeah that's, that's what's up. That's, listen, if I, if I come to Southern California, man, we, I, I, I don't, you know, I, we have to make it happen. Yeah. We got to have some food and drink. Oh yeah. Me, me, you and Michael yeah. all hang out. <laughs> that's a bet that's a bet awesome. i appreciate it all right rock i'll let you go it was nice talking to you i really appreciate the thank time you, you're giving me yes sir thank you for having all me right. on the show i'll talk to you soon all right talk to you soon rock Peace. bye all right. i just want to say thank you for watching my video with um rock harper season three winner of house kitchen i really appreciate it i uh, many fans that i may have by doing this i just want to say thank you for the support i've received a lot of messages a lot of comments requesting um, other contestants and other winners Um, a lot of these people are pretty hard to get a hold of if you can imagine they're in the restaurant industry i've been trying to interview rock for maybe two months and he's a really busy guy and i wanted to respect his time and just keep the interview at roughly 30 minutes i think it was 36 I just even talk to you just about my stories, my ideas with just even why I'm doing this. I know maybe a lot of you may wonder, what's this guy doing interviewing these people? <clears throat> so I'm a little sick, so sorry about that. I'm repping the Zelda shirt. I'm a huge fan. Um, I had this idea about maybe eight months ago. I do social media marketing. I work at a hospital as a nursing assistant on a stroke unit. It's a very heavy unit, a lot of work, um, a lot of sad stories I, I'm surrounded by. I have a huge heart for just taking care of people that can't take care of themselves. I and mean, I think I'm gonna, <laughs> that heart's gonna stay with me for a long time. So even just with the chefs like Michael, for instance, and kind of backtrack on my other interviews because I know I haven't really spoken much to it. But when I met Michael, um, he's never used his house kitchen experience to really get a following or anything like that so for the first time in 12 years he's actually using those 30 days he spent on a set of hell's kitchen spending time with gordon ramsay and all these great people he's using that now to just build uh, a fan base and even people that he's interacting with and helping out and my whole goal in doing this was to for the fans of Hell's Kitchen, because I've been a fan for a long time, at the same time, I'm not just a fan. I run a small business. I have a heart for entrepreneurship, but not the weird ads you see on all these social media platforms. I really want to build something myself from the ground up. So that's just my heart with this YouTube channel is that I'm a fan of the show. I always look people up after the show. I can't find anything relevant on them that I would want to watch. So... With my heart for fans of Hell's Kitchen, I really wanted to just use these interviews as a way to interact with these Hell's Kitchen chefs and winners and contestants and all that. And for the fans to maybe see a little bit like of an insight of how these guys live their lives, their stories, things that maybe typically a TV interviewer wouldn't want to ask or even care to ask. I, I want to know. I, want, I love transparency. One thing I loved about Rock is he was just so open to answer any questions. I had talked to him before. Um, and he was just so just kind, so humble. And just a really cool person to talk to. Um, I think he's starting something with Hell's Kitchen people too. So <laughs> that might be a good connection for him to have. Just to 
there are a lot of people I know that were on Hell's Kitchen and I've talked to. So I've talked to a lot of people on the phone, actually. Um, Jessica Cabo from season one. I talked to Barrett quite a bit. Chef Brett, who's on season 18 right now and was on season 14. I've messaged um, Chef Nedra, who was on um, Zach Womack's season. I forget, maybe season 14 as well. I'm not sure. Um, I had a great like hour-long conversation with Sterling Wright. I think he's season 13. I'm not sure. Um, and I've, ta- I've talked to many of these people on the phone, but to really get them who are so busy to sit down and just do something like anything with rock is it's quite difficult so i actually put a lot of work into setting aside my own time and my own schedule because i do have a full-time job i do social media marketing for different restaurants i love that scene it's kind of why i'm doing this because i love this so much so um if you guys could just thank rock personally on his instagram at rock harper uh, that'd be great i just thank him for doing this with me i had a great time with him and even just kind of backtracking to my story at Michael, I met Michael through Instagram. He had like maybe 40, 70 followers. Um, found him through an old business that he used to own and sold it. And then I typed in that name because I couldn't find Michael Ray anywhere. Typed in that name, told him, hey, why don't you come down to my apartment or I can go visit you wherever you're working. And I'll help you set up all your social media, streamline it, make it easy for you, install the apps on your phone. And you can just kind of take it from there and we'll do these YouTube videos so that you can um, really just build on things yourself. And even speaking with Rock too, my heart behind doing this is really to help these chefs build their following. Like I hope that a lot of Rock's fans watch this and go follow him and get to know him through his Instagram. That's really uh, my heart behind this. So I just want to say thank you. If you watch this, um, please subscribe. I know people are always begging for subscribers, but it honestly would really help me out. It will really help me gauge what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. And I'm open to any suggestions. I know I don't have the best um, audio, best editing. Um, this is all new to me, still starting out this whole YouTube venture. I hope to do more chefs. My goal is 100 Hell's Kitchen chefs. Then I have another project where I want to interview the, um, 100 Southern California chef owners, so chefs that own their own restaurants, or any sous chefs and executive chefs in the industry out here. So if you have any connections with another Hell's Kitchen chef, um, let me know. I would love to talk with them, have them on my YouTube show. And my goal one day is to do group interviews with these chefs and just have them rail about their experiences on Hell's Kitchen and all that stuff. So my goal is a thousand subscribers. Hopefully by in a year I can get all that. Uh, my video with Michael hit fifteen thousand views, which is pretty. I, I've never done anything on YouTube, so I think that's great for me. But I just want to say thank you for everyone watching this. I really appreciate it. Um, I put a lot of work in behind the scenes on trying to get these people to agree to this because I'm still kind of like a nobody in this scene. Just coming up, doing these interviews, kind of approaching people pretty aggressively at times to get their attention. Um, so yeah, I just want to say thank you for everyone watching these videos and just give me give me a chance to just be heard and listen to all these chef stories. I think they have a lot of good stuff to say, and I I, I appreciate the relationships I'm building with these people. It's really really unique, really cool, and I hope to just give back to these chefs who's given so much to this industry and just give back in general so thank you guys for watching i really appreciate everyone taking the time to even watch this little snippet of me so let me know if you watched my video and you liked it any other chefs you want me to interview i have one with robert hess sorry <clears throat> i have one with robert hess the sound quality is kind of bad we're gonna do another one But yeah, just let me know what you guys want to see, and I'll try my best to make it happen. So thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, Subscribe if you can. Give me a like. Um, You can message me on my personal Instagram. It's at miles.matias. That would be great. Thank you so much.